Good morning, everybody. Welcome to week two of A Life Worth Living. Um, I hope you enjoyed the introduction, maybe a bit theological and a bit too much info. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting book, Philippians, and it just helps us to look at how we move from giving our lives to Christ and what we're called to do, what we are and what we become as Christians. So I hope you're enjoying this and I'm enjoying teaching it again. So it's nice to be with you. Um, let us pray. Lord and Heavenly Father, just thank you that we we desire your word. We desire to learn, to grow, to shape, to mold, um, to become more like you day by day. And Father, the way we do that is through scripture, through sharing together, through growing together. So Lord, bless this time as we share together in fellowship in this Bible study. Uh, Nikki Gumbel's A Life Worth Living. Open our hearts and minds. And Lord, yeah, sometimes I think when we, when we look at stuff, we think, yeah, but we know all this. But it's good for us to go back to the basics. It's good for us to remember what happened when we said, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. What that means, what it is. You know, and today we're looking at a new heart. We've just got this new life, this new zeal, this new passion that is in with us. So, Lord, we just thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Last week, like I said, we had a look at introduction and the initial greeting in verses 1 to 3. Um, and we saw that the book of Philippians revolves around five remarkable features. The place, um, Philippi, the people across all barriers, rich, poor, you name it, it was all there. And the purpose of the letter was encouragement and thanks, just to uplift one another. And I wonder if we, especially now, you know, just lifting up one another, encouraging one another um, as the day draws near. And then Paul speaks also of pleasure, this immense pleasure that we get from being Christians. And the preamble, the grace and peace to you, grace and peace to you. So this week, we're going to look at a new heart, which is in Philippians 1, verses 3 to 11. But let me just share a story with you. It's a story that Nikki shares. Um, it's a story of a missionary by the name of Kerry Dixon, who went to work with a team of Christians in the Philippines. Um, Philipp Philippines, not the Philippia. Okay. Um, and one of those days, they went out and to a tribe called the Tiboli. To Bali um, on Lake Cebu. It was a stiff hike and took several hours over rough and mountainous terrain. The trip needed two interpreters. Can you imagine just the difficulty? The first from English to Saborno and the second from Saborno to the Tiboli. Uh, quite, a, quite a complicated thing. Having arrived late in the village, um, they'd heard that the white people had arrived and started to gather. Kerry shared about Jesus through the interpreters. And when it finished, the group pushed forward a middle-aged man from the village, and he'd been blind from birth. And they said if Jesus was God, then they wanted to see him in action. Now, I don't know about you, but my heart would have stopped right there. Um, in the silence that followed, Kerry boldly laid hands on the man and prayed. After it finished, he asked the man what he could see, and the response was he could see flickering lights. Kerry prayed again and asked again if he could see. The response was that he could see Kerry's outline. And Kerry then prayed the third time. And there was no need to ask for the response because the man was jumping for joy and praising the true living God. In that moment, 50 people were saved. And till today, that church is still growing. So, yeah. Um, a new heart, a new challenge, a new purpose, um, a new hope. And today we're going to look at a new heart. Philippians 1, verses 3 to 11. I thank you, my God, every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. It is right for me to feel this way about all of you, since I have you in my heart, and whether I am in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, 
all of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Just that far. So yeah, when we look at that passage, we see that there are three clear points that Paul wants to speak about. One is the confidence in the power of God in verses 3 to 6, the compassion of the people of God, verses 7 to 8, and the concern for the priorities of growth, verses 9 to 11. So do we, you know, coming back to the first part, confidence in the power of God. Do we have the confidence? If we go back to Kerry's story, would you and I have the confidence to stop and just pray, trusting that God would heal, believing that God would heal in any circumstance? Paul, let me just read it again for you. I thank my God for you every time I think of you and every time I pray for you all. I pray with joy because of the way which you have helped me in the work of the gospel from the very first day until now. And so I'm sure that God who began the work in you will carry on until it is finished in the day of Christ Jesus. Paul says that in a nutshell, God is amazing and that we can have confidence in him. I mean, my favorite verse, it's one of my coolest verses. Verse 6, I'm sure that God who began this good work in you will carry it on until it is finished on the day of Christ Jesus. The early church had been and has been founded on incredible signs and wonders. Let's go back last week uh, as a reminder. Paul wanting to go to Asia, but the doors were closed and he ends up in Philippi. We see the amazing conversion of Lydia. The Lord opened her heart to respond to God's message in Acts 16. Her heart was opened and she opened her home to God. We see evil spirits banished. A slave girl is released from what was holding her captive and her heart was changed. Acts 16, 16 to 18. We see Paul and Silas in prison, not sorry for themselves, but rather joyful in Christ, a miracle all on its own. And we see the power of God in an earthquake as Paul and Silas are set free and the jailer and his family are saved. Our new heart, our conversion, comes out with a confidence that says, that verse 6 again, I'm sure that God who began this work in you will finish it at the coming of Christ Jesus. Paul has confidence in God and what he is capable. We can have the same confidence in that if we look to God and what God has already done in our lives, then surely we can trust and have confidence in what he will still do. In John 28, Jesus promises us this exact thing when he says, I give them eternal life that they shall never die. No one can snatch them away from me. That's the confidence we have. God will never let us go. And just logically, if God has put in so much effort to us this far, surely he won't give up on us. He looked for me for 40 years. There's no way he's going to let me go. You know, so whether you've just converted or been converted for a long time, God will never let you go. Again, verse 6. God starts and God finishes. The second thing Paul alludes to is the compassion for the people of God. Our hearts start to be renewed as they start to be renewed as this heart of stone starts melting and becomes a God heart. Um, we start to get a new compassion for people. Verses 7 to 8. You have a special place in my heart, says Paul. So it is right for me to think this way about all of you. All of you are my partners. Together we share God's favor, whether I'm in prison, defending or confirming the truth of good news. God is my witness that with all compassion of Jesus Christ, I long to see every one of you. Amen, amen. I feel the same way in this COVID circumstance. 
But we need to remember that even though Paul's heart had been renewed and he had developed an incredible compassion for God's people, he never became a soft touch. He never became a doormat. He stood up to Roman authorities. He demanded his rights. He knew how to be tough. He knew how to be tender. Paul simply showed a deep love for the people of God, a close relationship with the people of God, and a responsibility for their conversion, for their salvation, to see that all end up in heaven. J.B. Lightfoot said, His heart throbs with the heart of Christ. His compassion, his love for the people of God was as important to him as his renewed heart. His compassion was Christ and for Christ. So we become filled with love. Paul writes that amazing thing in, in 1 Corinthians. Um, you know, the, the love passage where he says, I may speak in tongues of humans and angels, but if I don't have love, I'm a loud gong and a clashing cymbal. I may say all sorts of things, but if it's without God, it's without love. I may have faith and knowledge, but without love, meaningless. Don't read it. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It's an amazing passage. And then we get the concern for growth, verses 9 to 11. Uh, I pray that your love will keep on growing. Does our love for God keep on growing? Because of your knowledge and insight, that you may be able to determine what is best and be pure and blameless until the day of Christ Jesus. Christ will fill your lives with everything that God's approval produces. Your lives will then bring glory and praise to God. Paul is revisiting the church with this letter. It's about 11 or 12 years since it started, and the church is flourishing. It's grown in both maturity and numbers. Paul's wish and concern is for their continued growth. Our wish, our concern, my wish, your concern, the elders, is for us to grow as a community in faith and in love. A growth in love, verse 9. That it will become more and more. That will overflow. Go and read 1 Corinthians again. Go and see what serving in love means. Love is not just an emotion. It's an experience. I mean, it's really just an experience. Someone just shared with me the other day how someone just looked at them longingly and just needed. And I know it's against the rules, but they just reached out and hugged. And the love that was experienced just brought tears to us. So I don't know. Growth in understanding of God and understanding of each other. James 1 verse 5 says, If any of you needs wisdom to know what you should do, you should ask God and he will give it to you. God is generous to everyone who doesn't find fault with it and he doesn't find fault with it. How do we grow? Spending time with Him. I mean, we have the most brilliant opportunity to just spend time with God. It's really amazing listening to Him, being guided by the Holy Spirit. Spending time in the Bible, praying, time with each other, on the phone, just sharing um, about this amazing gift of God. Growth in holiness of life. Now, this is a challenging one because I wonder if we really desire to grow in holiness. Verses 10 and 11. A pure life which translated from the Greek is an unmixed life. <laughs> there's a, there's a, an interesting challenge, an unmixed, not confused, not vacillating between Jesus and the world. It's a chosen life, clear and straight. A life of inner purity that comes from within and is genuine. A renewed and different life. A life that is blameless. A life that is without offense. A life that is filled with the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of righteousness. Go and read Galatians 5, 22 to 23. Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. So in conclusion... From 1 Corinthians 13, 13, we read, So these three things remain, faith, hope, and love. But the best one of these is love. Paul says the same thing about a renewed heart, 
when he says with a renewed heart we have faith faith in the confidence of god love love in our compassion for others hope hope in our concern for the growth both in ourselves and others so that all of this brings glory and praise to god amen let us pray lord and heavenly father just grow within us faith love and hope compassion joy sharing just yeah lord may we have a jesus heart a renewed jesus heart where we just love one another we seek holiness and we share the amazing story the amazing gift that you have given us so lord we thank you and we praise you in jesus name amen well i hope you enjoyed that see you next week remember jesus loves you you've given your life to him or you're thinking about giving your life to him he loves you he will never ever let you go um, because he loves you simple